You guys might be able to read the comments if they're this big. Wow. Yeah, we can. That's oh. amazing. Hey, guys. What's happened? This, it's a new thing. Yeah, we've got Estelle in there. This is the peanut gallery. Where's Cammy? We've got Eric in there. By the way, Eric has uh, is distributing a Magic Leap uh, test on uh, on itch, and um, I don't I don't I don't know if if you go to the Discord chat, you, he he shares a little bit more about it. He's he's just testing out how to get how to how to. How, to how do you go to this? How do you go to the Discord chat, Paul? I'm glad you asked, Spencer. You go to chat.xrtalk.net. Uh, you can also oh, you can also go to watch.xrtalk.net, and you can also like and subscribe this video. We just took yes. care of everything right out the box. All of that shit, right? Yeah, right, right off the. You know what? Uh, um, I don't think that we need to go any further with uh, our, our 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 beginning banter. I just I really want to see oh. our friend. Where is he? I want to see him. He's he's he's, he's there. Right he is. There. There Wait, is. oh, you, you point. Oh, look, I pointed the right direction on the first try, too. Graham! Hi, Graham. Oh, hey! Oh, my gosh, nice we're so excited. You, you here. I I'm know. just looking for you. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's been trapped in that, that gif for years, just yeah. looking around. It was, it was very thin. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. We, and, uh, the other thing I, uh, we learned, so, uh, a lot of the, uh, the New Zealand friends, all of our mutual New Zealand friends, it turns out that this time of day to broadcast is a very convenient time for New Zealand time. So we may see some of our, our, uh, our form, former coworkers in the chat. They were pretty active last week. So, Excellent. I, Hey guys. Yeah. We got all kinds of, got a Hi, good Tara. so, I mean, we're we're just gonna like catch up, but I think I think the the fun thing to do that we usually do with a guest is we kind of talk about how how we came to know each other, and um, I'm I, I'll share my version because I want to I want to hear Spencer's version because I don't know if I know it very well. My version is Spencer and I were working on projects together. He was in Santa Cruz, I was in South Carolina. We were doing stuff for the aquarium. We we're doing fun stuff. All of a sudden, Spencer's working out of the co-working space, next space, and he's like, "Oh, my friend Graham," and like, "Oh, Graham, this and Graham that," and I'm like, "Who's Graham?" And yeah, he's, he's like, "He's a programmer." He's yeah. Oh, he's a pro he, he helps me yeah. with these projects. Actually, <laughs> it, I mean, it, it's been it's been long enough. I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure you introduced him as just like another game programmer. And then I finally figured out, and I, I was a huge fan of Seventh Guest, and I'm like, oh, well, here's this, he's a fancier programmer than I am, what's going to happen? And I'm like, who is this guy? And I didn't know him at all, and, and Spencer was just enamored, because Graham was sharing, and they were going to share an office, and they're just doing it, and I'm like, well, what's going to happen? And like, who is this guy? And then I get to Santa Cruz for a project, probably for the aquarium. Graham turns out to be the sweetest, nicest guy ever, and I'm the jerk. <laughs> okay, my story is somewhat similar. Um, I did not know that Graham was a famous person. Graham was just this cool guy who was down this down the hall from me, and he was like, "Hey, let's you know, I'm doing this thing, and it's really fun, and and you know, like like let's let's move in together. It'll be great. We'll have an office together." And so. Like, all right, cool. And this new guy, Graham. And then uh, Paul started to, you know, Paul Paul doesn't um, express himself super well sometimes when he's feeling a little butthurt. And, uh, um, <laughs> how, how dare you? And so, and so, you know, Paul was like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, you and Graham, huh? Okay. <laughs> you know, and, uh, um, and then Paul came out and he met Graham. And, and that's when Paul was like, dude, do you know who Graham is? I was like, well, yeah, he's this great guy that, you know, he's my roommate. He's like, no, no, like Google him. And so <laughs> I was like, oh, holy shit, seventh guest. I love that. That was amazing. I, so uh, I, I really, Graham, I had no idea, like, uh, um, what you had done beforehand. I just kind of, like, I was in the moment uh, at that point. And uh, um, I'm sorry I didn't Google you. All right, all right, Graham, it's your turn to tell us about how amazing it was to meet us. Yeah. <laughs> well, Paul, I, I just want to point out that Paul is my favorite because he he he, is, he actually has Guinness. Um, oh, oh, and, oh, there we go. Wait, wait, we go. I I have Guinness too. 
It's just in a wine glass. Spencer has wine. Um, no, no, there's Guinness. See, look, no, see, look Guinness. there's no bubbles. My one requirement was Guinness. Mm-hmm. And that was you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was contracts, I thought. So that was pretty clear. That was... <laughs> But, it's, um, the, it's the brown M and M's. I'd left Apple to start GRL games, and um, for the first two years of GRL games or something, I'd sat in my pajamas at home. And um, slowly, you go from wearing t-shirt and jeans and socks and shoes to, you know, in, in, getting dressed every day to, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you're, you're just going upstairs and like just got get doing and just working. And I realized that's a uh, I've got to get out of the house and go to an actual office if I want to be a human. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I uh, decided that I, this co-working space downtown, Nick's Space in Santa Cruz was the place to go. Um, and it, was, it was nice. I, um, my lawyer, um, um, Patrick Riley, was there. And, oh, pa- um, I didn't know he was your lawyer. I, knew, I know Patrick. I didn't know he was your lawyer. And he was actually the one who introduced me to Spencer. And so I kind of... <laughs> You Spencer a little bit, and um, you know, kind of, um, we kind of shared, it, you know, kind of interested. He was an artist and a kind of a programmer, kind of. So we we chatted more and more, and, and like, well, I kind of was looking for an office instead of just somewhere to hang out. And Spencer was kind of looking for an office, and obviously, since uh, Nick Space had this two-person thing going on, it's like, well, let's go in on an office and split the money. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> So we went to an office and split the money, and um, it, it was it, it, it was very good. Um, and I, I never intended to come in between the greatest friendship of all time, which is, of course, the <laughs> friendship here. Uh, which no, is, you made it a greater I, friendship of all time. I was, oh, my God. I never meant to be the person in the middle of that. So and well, that was... <laughs> There's there's a reason why you're the middle column of this show. You're between us. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, so, I just so, I just remembered. Like I remembered the before I got I, before I met him and got to know him because this kind of ties into the to what we what we started doing together is Spencer was like, oh, Graham has an agent and 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 his agent has a project for him that you might be able to help with. And I was like, he's got an agent. He's a what programmer has an agent? And then this was the start of the. We won't get. We won't get in. We won't get into the specifics of the agent. But this was the start of the two bit bub project that we did for Paranorman, and and Wyden and Kennedy. Which uh, Tara in the chat actually before she joined Torch was at Wyden and Kennedy. So there's there's your little circle of life. But yeah, yeah. lots of lessons on that project. Well, oh, my God, and you know what? I'm not sure. Is it okay if I tell the Anne Marie story? Uh, with the guy who we can't actually talk about, I don't think, but uh, um, uh, uh, the, uh, um, getting rid of the middleman. That can, can I tell that story, or is that is that is that, is that too dicey? Oh, I oh I know what you're talking about. I would um, I would just say that um, they weren't Graham's agent for long, and not not till the end of that project. <laughs> they didn't last till the end of that project. <laughs> I think that's I yes. that's where we should leave it. I think, but but yeah, it was uh, it it. But that is the so Graham. I don't know if you remember, but uh, Spencer brings it up almost every show. But that is the origin of the little floaty spinny script that floaty I spinny. that I wrote for because Graham because uh, Spencer wanted. I think it was for a prop or something. He wanted it to hover and spin, and I was like, look, I'm and he wanted. Well, no, first I just wanted it to spin. Yeah, I just wanted something to spin, and I think it was actually on the aquarium project. I wanted the plankton to just spin in place, but I didn't want to. I, I wanted to randomly choose between uh, different ones and have them spin differently, and I didn't want to sit there and like you know like keyframe each thing because you were generating them uh, um, uh, with with code, and so we needed a way to be able to like randomly spin them, and so. Uh, I, I wanted something that would just spin them. And he made this thing called Spinny. And and it was Spinny.js. Uh, it was in JavaScript. And, uh, um, and, and and I used Spinny for everything. I was like, oh, I can spin that. I can spin this. I can spin so that. So maybe Floaty, then, Floaty came with 2-Bit Bub? 2-Bit Bub was Floaty. Floaty. And then we, so we had Floaty. And then we yeah. had Spinny. And then you guys combined them and, and, and into Floaty Spinny, which was, you know, do... Do an X, Y, or Z 
pulse back and forth and then also spin it. It's, and and it's, it really is a spectacularly useful thing. There are so many things you can do with that. You can attach it to a camera. You can attach it to, you know, it's like there's so many like wonderful little things you can do with it. Well, so, good rotation code is hard to come by. Uh, <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's a known thing in programmer circles that your know, stuff that actually rotates properly, very hard. Well, and right. okay. so now at this point, I've rewritten it so many times. It's like, um, you know, those those little coding exercises where people try to optimize to the lowest number of bytes. Like so. So now I've rewritten that code so many times at this point, I, I challenge myself to write it more and more like like functional yet tersely like what's the what's the minimal like what is the optimal like i think the original version of floaty spinny had all this like logic and stuff in it and at this point it's like probably a 20 line code file. you gotta write it so it rhymes <laughs> yeah. or, or write it so it's you know yeah just to keep <laughs> so me like interested haiku. yeah <laughs> it's like, use the sonic format 14 lines only and you know a b a b c <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the well, challenge in coding these days. It, 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 it is sonic coding. Yeah, well, I'm I'm writing. It's boring to just write working code. I, it needs to. If you ran it through um, a MIDI uh, processor, it would play a song at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, two bit bub was like I think. I mean, I'm probably biased, but it was the best mobile movie game ever um, that was released of all time. Is that fair to say? Is anyone going to disagree with that? The best mobile movie game that's that that no one really ever played because. Well, I mean, no, I but don't know why it was okay. Just, let, let, let's, was let's, so lay awesome. out, let's let's lay let's lay out what this was. Graham, Paul, and I were working on the aquarium. Graham was uh, um was was working on. Did we do the um the the Apple stuff before? Uh, um. Mm, before, WWDC. Mm, no. Yeah, the WWDC talk before uh, Wyden Kennedy, or no, before I don't think so. Do it, afterwards, I think Graham was so probably anyway. working on full deck stuff at the time. Probably. Right. So, so Graham said, "Hey, we got this project, and it's for uh, Wyden Kennedy, and it was going to be with Leica, and, uh, and and Leica did Coraline, and you know, uh, and, and and so there's, there's these you know amazing uh, prop." developers and they've got these incredible spaces that we need to make a game about and so we're like well we need to go up to portland and <clears throat> take photographs of uh of all of the sets so that we can then digitize those and make them into this kind of side scroller and uh so we took a whole bunch of photographs we went up to portland took a bunch of photos i didn't, we, I didn't uh, get we, to go on that trip you well, you were in South Carolina at that point, right? You had not, yeah, but, you, you were, you but were, I wasn't, yeah. I didn't get to go. And we got to see the early version of the movie. Oh, stop it! Right. I know what you're doing, yeah. I didn't, and we met all of the voice talent and we met all of it. was really fun. Watch Bub being, and we actually watched yeah. Bub being animated, and it was, uh, yeah. yeah, we did. That's right, yeah. that's right, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it was one of the best memories of my life, actually. It was so <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> but it is funny. You know, Spencer, that was like your, your first little uh, teeny pinky toe dip in the photogrammetry water almost because you were, you were taking photos and then reconstructing them in, as 3D models. And, like, I mean, it, it was oh, no. it's a much yeah, different process, kind of. but it's yeah, this it, idea it, of it taking photos. Actually... Yeah, it wasn't actually building geometry. We just we we took photos, uh, um, and then projected those onto planes. So basically, made a box, and then uh, and then mapped the photos onto uh, onto that box. And you could move the camera back and forth just a little bit, and you get yeah. parallax. If you did it too much, it would break. But we didn't allow you to do that. So we actually were able to, and then throw shafts of light and dust particles and other 3d things into it and uh and god it really worked well like i was i, I was looking at the um in preparation for this interview i was looking at some of the uh two bit bub um screenshots and stuff i don't think it runs on anything that's no the, now, the, right? the trailer is still on youtube though if you search if yeah. you search youtube for two dash bit bub you can still see the gameplay trailer 
because I still look to it. I have just bought some of the assets into uh, Unreal and just uh, you know lined them all up and bought them all in because they're all just sitting there and uh, you know it's, it still works. You can still well, I wanted an FBX file that uh, had I had the textures and FBXs for. I'm like, oh, I got all these ones, and so I wanted a town environment, and it was it, it, it just in the background, and so that worked pretty well. I can't believe you still have those files. <laughs> I have them. Do you? Do you have? How far back do your files go? You are a digital pack rat. <laughs> Graham, I think I have your hard drive. <gasps> you are still like you still have like two of my Macs. It's, uh, no. Uh. Uh-uh. No. Well, I have no Macs or hard drives. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I, I think I have your two bit bub. One of your big giant Sony like. Uh, oh really? 500 oh, cool. you know 500 gigabyte uh, uh thing it's around here somewhere anyway but yeah i think i have all of the files too but so you were able to bring them into unreal yeah. and uh, like you did that them. like yeah how they look they looked okay still it's uh the, the texture resolution does not look awesome <laughs> on a 4k monitor but it's 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 okay <laughs> Right, Spencer. it's only like ten years later, but it's uh, as a background right. asset. So the assets still look absolutely incredible. So we were talking about that a little bit before the show about um, Graham. You've been leaning a little heavier into Unreal, and I know both of both you and I have always had like a a preference and affinity for C plus plus. So I assume that's a part of it. But do you are you doing Blueprint and stuff like that, or? Yeah, actually, more Blueprints now. Um, you know, basically blueprints forever. Um, cause it's, um, just wanting to learn unreal. Cause I, I, I love unity and I love unreal. I love them both with equal, you know, I, I'll swear at them both equally. For four <laughs> right. hours a day. Yeah. Um, so no right. problem. <laughs> um, I will say that. And I love people at both companies. I, I want to say that I will make a project with unity and I'll make a project with unreal and I will be happy with the results of both of those projects. Perfectly fine. But I wanted to make, I wanted to make this game. It, it's a, it's a remake of one of my old games with unreal. And oh. cause I wanted to brush up on, um, on, on blueprints and I wanted to learn how to use, um, you know, the, uh, the camera tools. And I wanted to uh, specifically copy, um, um, like camera shots from the 1980s and learn how to go through and, and, and do actual camera shots and actually go make them and, 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 you know, actually get those camera shots in and do all, all the same things that you can do with Unreal. Cause I see that happening mm-hmm. in like at Florian and I see that happening in TV shows and all the things. And so I was like, okay, this is something I can go do. And so I, I spent about, Six hours a day watching tutorials on 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 movie scenes from the from the from the nineteen eighties and you know how you know directors set up shots and cinematography and then I spend about another six six hours a day cursing at setting up shots in <laughs> in Unreal um, using uh, uh, cine cameras and then I'll then I'll be happy with one camera shot and then I'll go completely relight it and um, with the post for you and then I'll start again and so. <laughs> Was, um, I saw the tweet where you went down a rabbit hole of uh, making your street lamps amazing, <laughs> or something like uh-huh. that. <laughs> well, then I be well. This remake is a it's an old game of mine called Metropolis, um, and it's um, and Metropolis is a, 19, a game I made in nineteen eighty seven, um, and it's um, back then it was kind of a rip off. Not a rip off. There's no such thing. I never made a rip off <laughs> of any game, but it was a <laughs> cyberpunk city game in uh, which you, you investigated. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, these crimes taking place at this ICD office. My company at the time was ICD in the UK, um, and so um, the, 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 the game was set in the future in a city that looked a lot like um, uh, like Blade Runner. For whatever reason, they copied me. It was, <laughs> it was, you did it first. Yeah, I, I did it first. But I did all the damn Cyber City games first. I was first in 1987. I don't care about all the ones coming out now. It was me. I'm making one. I don't care about all the others coming out. I'm doing one. You can all make one. I was first. I'm just going to remake one. Um, Gra- Graham, did you, did you ever play Syndicate? Oh, yeah. That was awesome, back, too. Yeah. Back in the 90s? Yeah. Uh, there was an Australian company that, that made... In, in fact, I, I went on their, uh, um, uh, I, I got on their, on their uh, um, Kickstarter um, that made a, a, an updated version of Syndicate, but I haven't been able to, like, have, have you, do you have any, 
Egypt. Like, have you played with that that new version yet? I no. Since, he, since, <laughs> Animal, since Animal Crossing came out, I was about to say he just got he just got through saying how he spends his days working on that project. Why don't we have time? I, I, I basically checked turn up prices and I watched tutorials on Unreal. Did, did, did I just mention that? <laughs> Okay, I, I have another question for you, actually, about um, about Unreal and uh, um, uh, what, what is the the modular uh, blueprint? Um, the, uh, blueprint. So, why are you using Blueprint and not just being the badass coder that you are? Why are you not just coding? Is there a reason to use Blueprint? Like, like, is there a a, a, a left brain, right brain kind of like 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 thing that works for you to use Blueprint instead of just coding it? It seems really quick to use blueprints, and I used to be convinced back in the day that you could use C++ and go make something go 10% faster, but there's no such thing as 10% faster anymore, and right. <laughs> blueprints can do anything. Um, all your shaders, you can make in blueprints. I, I don't need to go right. and learn shader languages. I don't need to go and learn all that stuff. Anything that comes in from, from any other tool from the asset store, um, use these blueprints. So you, you, you need to know blueprints. Uh, okay. So so and you and and knowing kind of the like like how, grokking the structure of code in your soul the way that you do. Like you guys are both, you know, programmers. You guys uh, you're developers, and this and you understand the flow and the concept using blueprint is probably easier for you guys than it is for people who don't under have that kind of innate knowledge right oh god no 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 i i think yeah. yeah like i i um i think visual scripting is the future like there's a lot of tools doing it actually i'll share this real quick because we did have it in our notes um it just got announced this week that unity has acquired bolt which does a visual scripting uh, type of workflow, and um, you know, Spark I'm in the middle of my very first, first uh, um, tutorial, tutorial on that right now. I bought so it. Spark so. AR does. I mean, I think, I think what people are doing with visual scripting is actually incredible, and they're actually. I I think what what Graham, my take on it is that we we're, we almost have the curse of knowledge in that case, whereas. We, kn um, we know how we would build it in code. And I think that's probably a folly to try to, to, you, to, to do noodle style visual scripting, to try to structure it like you would code. I think that's hard to do. I think you got to kind of, if you come in with, with not a lot of preconceived mus muscle memory, then you, then you can probably, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. That'd be me. Yeah. yeah. If you have yeah, no, I mean, if you have no brain whatsoever, then it's probably great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Just you're kidding. like, for example, how do I go to an AWS cloud server and go, go grab some JSON, pass it down, and go grab that that file, put it somewhere locally on my hard drive, and then bring it back in later and understand it in the blueprints? I understand how to do that in C++ in about 100 lines of code really easily. That's super simple. In Blueprints, right. there's like a gazillion little connectors. And you've got to go make those into functions so it looks simple and so it's reusable and do all the things. But it's uh, it, it takes a little bit. But in the end, that's actually it's actually kind of a nice way to go. And yeah. Oh, I think Spencer froze a little bit. Right. What? I'm here. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'm here. Hello. There you go. You froze for a sec. Yeah, OK. So that's that's interesting. So um, uh, you can build uh, um, uh, a series of pieces of, of, of code action into one module, and then that is your go grab AWS information and parse it into the data set that I want it to be in and output from this node and you can you can spend you know an hour or two or three or whatever uh, on building that little piece but then once you have that then you've got that little tool in your bag when yeah. someone says hey can we can we parse an aws data set and he's like yes i can i can just put in my little thing i spent three hours on and now i've got all that data that's coming into the game it's just like animal crossing it's just that you go and make a thing on your island and it turns into a little red suitcase and it's uh it, it's you, you, you you've been yeah. inside too long my friend <laughs> we've got a we've got a question in the chat from eric who wanted to know i know the answer to this but i want to hear 
Graham's answer. Uh, do you make your own art assets as well, Graham? <laughs> yes, I've been. I've actually been using a lot of, uh, of After Effects for this project. And so I've been learning After Effects. And Sp Spencer used to tell me that I was, I, I was a dangerous programmer <laughs> because I knew enough art to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and Paul is also exactly well, actually Paul is a really good artist. Paul is a great graphic designer, and 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 it, it it's uh, um it's wonderful working with Paul, uh um because of the fact that he has that kind of like innate you know well you and I did that uh, um that, yeah keep going keep uh, going that, I like I like where this is headed no well that was yeah, I'm, well, I'm done with you now I'm going to talk about Graham <laughs> uh, um uh, Graham you and I did that uh, that that uh, talk at WWZC about Prart and 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 how important Prart is and Prart uh, is programmer art and uh, um you know like and uh, I we used to at Atari we would make fun of the programmers and they would make fun of themselves and in fact mm -hmm. Prart came from one of the programs I used to work with and he would make art that was representative of what he wanted to see in the game. And then, uh, and, and, and we would make fun of it and he'd make fun of him. And you know, we, you know, but it actually is a really, really valuable thing for a programmer to attempt some art mm -hmm. so that they can get their idea across to the non code visual thinking artists that are on the team. And 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 we did a whole uh, shtick on that uh, in our talk at WWDC, and I That's and right, I, I yeah. still stand by it. I think it's really important that 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 uh, artists uh, learn uh, at least like how code works and how hard it is, and maybe understand a little bit about kind of the high level parts of code, and that and that programmers understand art and why it's important and what are the components that go into art. And like if we all know a little bit about each one's thing then we're gonna do a much better project we're gonna have better communication i th i th uh, like a little tip for the like i try to address the audience because i know like they're all like the, a lot of people that watch this are, are trying to learn and they're they're trying to build a career and um i would say as someone that mostly sits on the engineering side um if an artist asked to ask me to walk them through how a piece of code works I would never turn down that request. So I think like if you are an artist and you are working with an engineer and you're like, oh, it's great. I can, they, they do all that stuff for me. Don't be afraid to be like, hey, that thing you just did, can you just like spend 15, 20 minutes like walking me through the code and tell me how it works? Spencer's done that to me throughout the years, you know, frequently and like, um, I wouldn't recommend his approach, which is uh, he looks at the code with without me and then says, hey, it looks like you did this thing and then this thing. And then he, he basically tries to like narrate for me. And then I have to be like, no, that's not how that works. But <laughs> if, but if I'm excited about it, but like, you know, if, if an engineer, if there's one thing an engineer <laughs> likes to do, if there's one thing an engineer <laughs> likes to do, it's it's talk about the magnificent work they just completed. So like that's a, that's a little pro tip. If you're, if you're trying to get more on the programming side or engineering side and just want to learn, like understand how things work on that side of the, the wall, just ask, say like, Hey, can you just show me a little bit? And, um, and, 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 and same for the engineer that's where, like, I suck at 3d modeling. Like, sure. I can lay out some UI and stuff like that, but, um, it still helps to get in the tools once in a while. And even if you mess, you know, like you know, just mess around to learn something, I think it's hugely valuable. It makes you a better, like Spencer said, at the end of the day, if nothing else, it makes you a more effective communicator when you're collaborating with someone. I think it's a great point. I would also like to point out that, that, uh, um, that Paul was the one who made the fabulous XR talk logo in 3d by himself without asking me. You too. I used to sit across from from Spencer. In, <laughs> you two would get so heated at each other for art and programming on the phone on your projects, and now you're like, "Oh, you're a bestie." Oh no! I explain, let, let, I explain, it, I explain, it, I explain. No, I explain, it's it's still that way. Yell at each other. No, no, it's, it's still that way. We still do that. It's no, still that we way. still do that. Yeah, no, that's no, why no. I love sitting in there. <laughs> It's it's tough love. That's all.
I so I went like so I did have uh, so back to, kind of back to the timeline where we worked on um I can't remember which it may have been two bit bub but I wanted to bring this up I haven't talked to Spencer about this at all but I was still getting to know Graham obviously like I like Spencer spent every day with him in the office and I was kind of coming out to work uh, periodically on things and um. We were in the middle of a project. I think it was two above, but you, you guys correct me. Rocket Patrol. No, we oh, were Rocket Patrol. This was definitely early days of Paul knowing Graham because Graham starts sending these emails to the team that are talking about this news, like this thing that happened in the news. And I'm oh like, oh my God, that's right. I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, what, what, what is this? And then it's this really long email and I'm like, oh my God, did this really happen? And like, and what is going on? I'm, I'm, I'm like talking to Spencer off to the side. I'm like, like, what is, did I just get added to a list? Like, I really don't know what's going on. And I, the, the short, and it, it happened a couple more times before I figured it out and what it was. And, and I wanted to ask Graham if he has a habit of doing this. Cause I have seen him do it before, which is he basically tests the narrative of a game idea on people without them knowing it so oh, yeah. <laughs> so he was well, he, okay. he, he, I, 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 gotta, I gotta step in real quick here and say paul actually sent me an email saying is Graham okay because i also tested that, that same narrative that i'll tell you about in a minute uh, i tested that same narrative on neil stevenson <laughs> And so I sent that, that same email to him. And so, but you do you do it with no explanation. You do you. you the, I did that with no explanation. The email o'clock. reads as if it's just coming from you, and it's just a, a thought you're having. So two o'clock in the morning, living in Florida, the phone rings. <laughs> Laurie's phone, and you know, Laurie's my wife. Those who don't know. This is Neil Stevenson. Is I'm, I'm just concerned about Graham. He sent this very weird email. I got the number from from Alicia Naples. Um, you know, uh, my wife and I looked at, the, at this email, and we think Graham could be well be having some some mental issues. An and we, we just want to make sure that he's okay. <laughs> and Laurie's like, what? And she's like waking me up. I'm sorry. Have you met Graham yet? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. So, <laughs> it's a part so, of your process, obviously. And, um, <laughs> it, it was the same on Halo. That uh, I used to send out blogs to the to the Halo team called um, 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 uh, the Daily Spirit because the uh, the. Um, um, the, the ship in, in Halo Wars is called the Spirit of Fire. And so that we had our, our, our spirits um, a newspaper, which I had actual interviews with the crew. And this crew was not even in the game. Uh, we had you know, the nurse, we had the cat Spock, and we had the captain, and we had the engineer, and all the people who weren't in the game all doing their little blogs. And even some of the passengers on board and how they lost people, uh, you know, and their journey and so forth. And some people would go, this is crazy. Why are you doing this, Graham? And then slowly, You'd see that reflected in the artwork, and you'd see that <laughs> reflected in the design. People, you know, you know, they start to feel the world. They made yeah. me, um, you know, Spirit of Fire crew T-shirts, and they started wearing them, and people were all suddenly Spirit of Fire crew. Um, the one that got everyone messed up was right before Magic Leap, uh, right be before uh, everything was. We almost launched the greatest. XR, because to bring it back to XR talk. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> we almost lost the, you know, the, greatest, the greatest XR game that never was. Because um, we almost launched this huge Kickstarter. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. It was, um, it was called The Last Train. And so I thought to myself and to Spencer, obviously, and didn't inform Paul, um, what would be the how can I make um, an urban legend seem real so that everyone is suddenly convinced, is this urban legend real? <laughs> and, you know, th that it really exists. And so I thought, well, okay, I'll come up with an urban legend and then I'll make it seem so real that people question, does it really exist? And so the urban legend was that there's a train that travels throughout America on, on actual railroads and 
every now and again, it will stop at a station and pick someone up. And that person is, ge is generally never heard from again. And the government's never heard from, you know, it, it, uh, you know, the government follows these trains around. They know about them. They close down train stations. That's why train stations are sometimes closed. And trains are sometimes raped. This is the, the, you know, why black helicopters exist. This is why men in black exist. This is why the series about aliens. This is why it's all just this train. And so the Kickstarter was, um, that's, I knew these people that made comics. I knew these people that made records. I knew these people that made um, you know, books. I knew these people that made video games. I knew these people that made all, all these other media. Um, and I wanted to make something that was really cross media. I wanted to make something that was existed in every media. And so the Kickstarter was basically, you know, that you'd get um, you know, a book that was written in the 1800s that uh, you know, it, you know, that referenced the, you know, the train and the journey, a comic book written in the 1960s, uh, you know, that, that kind of referenced the journey, a vinyl record right. written in the 1970s. Uh, you know, written about you know the journey of the train from someone from the 2000s, and you know, a, you know, um, a, a video game by a crazy video game designer, in, you know, in in the 2010s. It's all about the uh, the, the conductor, um, and um, so the email I sent out to Paul was about my trip to <laughs> was about a fictional trip to Las Vegas, <laughs> and so I said I took this fictional trip to Las Vegas, and that's. Uh, you know, well, I didn't say it was fictional, I said it was real. It's a real trip to Las Vegas, and I was sitting in a diner, and I'm sorry, I was not being offline because I had to get a new phone because my phone and laptop were stolen, and I had to go get a new phone. Um, but I'd found this, um, this this storage box full of these these you know these books and comics and um, um, uh, uh, and things in, in Vegas, and I was being followed. And if you don't hear from me again. Um, please, please check that you know, at this email address for these kind of you know these kinds of things. I'll follow up with another email when I can. You know, please, yeah, you know, I, I'm trying to get home from Vegas right now. So yeah, I'll follow that's up right. With a much longer email of you know I'm trying to get, you know this book is crazy. It's full of this stuff about a train that goes around the country. Um, and so yeah, I tested the narrative on them without really telling them, and uh, apparently they they believed it was pretty real. Well, that's Graham. That was what that was really an amazing story and uh, and, and an incredible like entrance. I remember. I think I wrote uh, something back to you about yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, about my experience with the yeah. train, and you know, and and you know. Any thoughts of of going in that direction again, or or something like that? I mean, the like, well, like, you, I just, you're, you're a free agent. Now, I I just, so I just you, want to point out. I just want to point out that, like, keep in mind, this is only one project in that big brain of hit. Like, in like for him to think at that level of detail for any one of all the projects that he has in his head. And I also just want to say, from the perspective of being one of his guinea pigs. Um, <laughs> You you got to remember, like your uh, your average person would be like, send an email to say, "Hey, I'm kicking around this new game idea. I'm thinking it's going to be on Kickstarter. Here's the premise." You got to remember, we were in the middle of a totally different project. Graham sends this email says, "Guys, I'm stuck in Las Vegas," and like, and exactly what Graham said, and like, and it came across in two or three emails where I'm like, he is going through this box of stuff, and he's like finding this really weird stuff. <laughs> And yet, like uh, like Estella says in the... What's weird is that I knew what was going on in Graham's head, and you didn't. No, and so and, I, I, I was getting... I got like a... I, I'm I got in the office. I'm sitting across the right. Office, uh, I, so I basically I basically got a curated, immersive experience. Like, what do they call it when it's... <laughs> what what like it, it like like it's like a, a like the real world games experience but i had no idea i was a player but like and and then <laughs> but that was not the last time that he he did that but it was i always thought it was just amazing like oh, like these emails like he doesn't care if anybody else besides the four people he sent it to ever sees it he, it's like beautifully written it's a rich world it's all this detail and i came to realize that there's probably a lot more in Graham's head, but he's, he is, you, you know how like a piece of artwork, like a piece, especially in games, like, you know, when a, uh, an asset in a game, we, we, you put that little detail layer on it that just gives a little more texture, a little bit more grit, a little bit, it just feels a little bit more complex. It's it, it, like, so their audio layer. Is, yeah. yeah. Like, and, and he's basically, 
he's playing around in those those parts of the universe in his head that may never actually be the core part of the game but by the virtue of the fact he's thought through them like he said it permeates through like if you start building this stuff you you have a sense of the universe you're working in i just think it's brilliant and it yeah it's really fun to be uh on the on the back side of that i i have a i have a so i have another I have another story where Graham, I, Graham and I were guinea pigs together in, in a scenario like that, but I didn't want to derail Spencer's question that he had. Do you remember what you were asked? I just totally uh, hijacked you. No, 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 no. Keep going. Go, go, go. So, go. okay. So, so, um, I definitely want to get in. Well, let, let's do this real quick. So obviously we became fast friends, all of us, and we're working on stuff. We did the two bit bub game. Mm -hmm. We did the WWDC thing. That's still available online, actually, too. Um, and then we finally got around to working on our own game, and it was a, a card-based game based off an old European board game. Uh, we ported it into a 50s kind of nostalgia space theme, and it was called Rocket Patrol. And we were Rocket Patrol. Yeah, there's their voiceover. Yes. Yeah. And so, voice, yeah. And so we were, we were iterating on that, and we were having a good time and, and like working on that. And then Graham was like... He had this like really serious Skype call. I remember because I was in my co-working space in South Carolina and I went in the phone booth to take the call and we're on the Skype call with Graham and he's like, so there's this company that they're, they've been, they've been hounding me and they really want me to come see their tech. And I can't really tell you exactly what it is, but I can tell you that if they do what they say they're. I, he's, I'm really skeptical, but they won't leave me alone. So I've got to go check it out. I've got to sign an NDA. So I'm not going to be able to keep working on Rocket Patrol. But, like, I'm really skeptical. But, like, I I got to go. And he, he just kind of disappeared for, like, maybe a few weeks, maybe. And then we had another follow-up call. And he goes. I, okay. So hold on. Yeah. Hold on. In between the, that and the follow-up call, Graham showed me. Uh, um, the, uh, the, the, it was like a, it was like a, uh, like an eight by five, uh, kind of glossy printout from magic leap. And, oh, really? uh, um, and it was, uh, it was a picture of, uh, um, uh, the Wendell and, uh, um, a couple of the other characters that, the that, that the CG guys had built, uh, um, beforehand. And, uh, and then, and, and then we started talking about it. He's like, yeah, it's like, some engineers and some vfx artists from hollywood and uh and and and, and both of us were you know and, and i think also you when you when you when you when you saw it you know we were all like this is like this is ridiculous this is like not something that is really real this is like this is you know uh this is somebody in south florida who's you know uh you know like like making up uh, um, things. Well, and, uh, and but, then, but before I, before I saw it, Graham came to us and he said, "Look, you guys know me. You know I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. I worked at Apple. I've seen I've seen cool stuff before. You trust me, right? I'm here to tell you. I I could I could <laughs> not is, is, I could not believe my own eyes with what I saw, and that's all I can tell you for now. <laughs> well, I think like, when, when Graham <laughs> when Graham sent that, uh, I was out in North Carolina or in South Carolina with you working on one of the aquarium projects and we uh um uh like he was like you need to come down here now and we were both in south carolina so we jumped on a freaking jet blue and went to uh um went to, to florida right there was there was like out? a there was like a little few month period where graham really did kind of disappear and say i'll if there's anything here if this company is what they say they are I'll let you know. And we just kind of, we worked on our own stuff, but yeah, we did, we were in the middle of an aquarium project and we knew we were going to go down to Florida. He, by this time, Graham had basically said, I'm, I want to see this thing through. And, and that's when he's like, look, you guys got to trust me. I thought it sounded crazy, but you got to at least see it for your, he said, at least see it for yourself. He said, I, Come luck. I think, right. I think I can get you a little contract out. Like, you know, here's another little project if you're interested in it. Right. And then, <laughs> and then we went down and then we got, uh, we, we went down cause where we were in South Carolina, it was just a, like an hour flight and we were just going to go for the day and come back. And we wound up getting trapped in Florida for yeah. four days. That's right. Yeah. Like four days. Like with, yeah. With, 
and, and we didn't bring any extra clothes. Yeah. You know? So like we were wearing the same clothes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, there was, yeah, well, I've got, there's a fake magazine cover that Annie made about like, you know, will they ever get back home? Like we were stuck in, <laughs> stuck in Florida. No clothing stores in Florida. It's, yeah. it's, so, so the night before we went to go, oh boy. Uh, actually, no, no, no. It was, it was, it was the day of, we went down, we saw the tech. We were like completely blown away. Like it was absolutely un freaking real. How 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 uh, actually it was completely real. Uh, <laughs> how real uh, everything looked uh, on the, the the depth and everything. This is on the beast, uh, or what are they called the bench the shop. big bench thing. Uh, um and uh, um and then we went out that night. We stayed at some hotel. I forget where. And, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the handlers from Magic Leap, which was uh, Annie. Uh, Annie and uh, and Jen. Uh, yes, and, somebody, and, else. and somebody else from the 3D team. <clears throat> right. Uh, they, they, they basically bought drinks all night long. And so we just got hammered that night. And we, and we were like <laughs> talking about the possibilities and it's Oh my God, it's going to be amazing. And we just, you know, we, we became, you know, uh, very inebriated. The next morning we showed up to, uh, look at it again and have some conversations with a couple of, uh, principals and then go talk to Roni. And when we're sitting there talking to Roni, uh, both of us are, are, are just, just wrecked. And, uh, um, and, and we, we basically negotiated, uh, our, uh, um, uh, we, we negotiated our, the, the, our, our, our employment, uh, just like completely hung over. I think Paul, I mean, like uh, if you, if you oh made, if you made the movie version of it, we're sitting, we're sitting at Roni's little desk in that old original office. It's a million, <laughs> the, the humidity is 150% outside and sweltering heat. <laughs> the air conditioner barely works in the office. I can hear myself. There's seven foot lizards in the there's, yard. Yeah, yeah. There's like yeah, right. there's like sweat coming off our temples. I'm like I'm like <laughs> I'm doing every like internal motion I can to hold everything in. And then bet- <laughs> between us, so between us, the funny part was is there was a couch. There was a couch behind the two kind of individual seats at his desk, and and the the person that we're talking about Annie that kind of hosted us the night before she knew we were hurting and we're sitting there trying to focus on Roni he's talking about all this crazy stuff and we're trying to be engaged and we're trying to keep it all together and then you just see like Annie's little hand with a cup of water appear between the two of us and be like here here drink this like drink this and we held it together but I told him as soon as we got out of that meeting, I said, I need to go lab it down in the hotel. And I went back, we went back to the hotel and I barely didn't make it. It was, it was, I don't, I don't know if Ronnie ever fully heard that story, but like we, it, I, it was so hard to listen, but yeah, somebody in the chat actually asked, I don't, Graham, I don't know if you, the thing you, I don't know if you really have a story about your, the first time you saw what you saw, but I think all I remember was you came back to us and be like, it was crazy what I saw. Like, did you get a similar first time experience that we did? Like that same demo? Yeah. Um, my demo was, uh, it was probably similar. It was the beast, which is, um, still something most people haven't seen today because it's a swept light field. Um, it's very uh, different from the ML one. Um, that's, I joined Magic Leap based on that demo. Um, and that was, uh, that was incredible. And so that demo I sat down to look at was, um, one of the monsters basically in front of me and I could control it with controller walking around in front of me and like, that's cool. Haven't seen that before. Um, and then in the back of the room, another monster stood up and I hadn't noticed it was there before. And <laughs> oh, that's I'm right. Like, I remember. You. Yeah, that's right. That's like unusual because that was so naturally there. It was no Scooby-Doo effect. And when I looked at the monster in the back of the room, the monster in the front of the room went out of focus. So when I looked at the monster in the front of the room, the monster in the back of the room went out of focus. And I was like, huh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty freaky. <laughs> um, that's pretty incredible because that's, um, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty unusual. Um, cause coming from Apple, 
um, you think, you know, this may be iPad. Right. Two is like, you're arrogant enough to think, I know everything. <laughs> I know everything that everyone right. in every garage everywhere is making. Um, and that's, it turns out that it's not even close to true. Yeah. Uh, there, are right. people in, there are people in garages making incredible things. And I remember you told us that story. That, that, that was how you convinced us um, to come down there, was that, that concept of, of something you didn't even recognize as as media yeah uh was in the room with you i forgot yeah i forgot i I forgot that's the yeah i do remember that now that that's how you told that and still that sense of presence with you that sense of of a light field present with you is still something that's um you know that's we should that's true you know that, that that true presence with you is is something that we've yet to truly achieve with 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 any device uh, you know, because you know, magically one is wonderful. It's it's the most advanced spatial computing device I can put on my head, but it's you know it doesn't achieve a swept light field that gets you know, quite yeah. quite that effect. Um, right. But it's uh, you know it's it's you know it's we will get there and we will have that experience. And when it happens, you'll see what I saw and you'll get what's what the world's how the world's going to change. A little a little piece. I did this today. I got a little piece. Here's some insider baseball for folks. I'm wearing my very old hoodie and what you will oh yeah what you will what you will notice is the long wings on the leaper so this was the original leaper and if you look at the new one which has gone through a few different revisions but you know it's old school magic leap gear when the wings of the leaper are are wide are long yeah, yeah. Are, 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 are andy lanning long yeah. that's the, that's the Christmas hoodie. Yeah. yeah yeah uh so so to take it all back to what i was like so where graham graham and i so fast forward a little bit through the magic leap story and um i'm sure there'll be questions but um so we were well actually uh we probably we probably have time for you to quickly um so, so for whatever reason, we decided as a company that we wanted to engage Neil Stevenson, which is, is you know, and um, you are the one that delivered the sword, right? That was how that started. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I went up to Seattle and delivered Neil Stevenson a, a, a sword from Lord of the Rings, yes. <laughs> Made by what, like a, a the or- yeah. Orcris, right? Like it's... <laughs> yeah, Orcris from, from, from Weta Workshop, because that's that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's how you get in to see Neil, and um, Neil is a fascinating man. He's um, he's absolutely incredible. Yeah, um, <laughs> I just love that. Like, who who would have thought in the 20, 2015 time period or twenty fourteen time period that there's still a story where someone hand delivers a sword as a sign of respect and respect right. and wish to engage. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember handing over the sword and then Neil showing us a lot of his short swords. And so we we're standing in Neil's backyard and he's he, he's got a long sword, which is about you know six feet long, and he's swinging it over his head. And he's like, this is how they use long swords in the battlefield. And so I'm thinking, I'm standing in Neil Stevenson's backyard. I could die. <laughs> <laughs> like and you know i mean like now if you've ever met neil in person him swinging a seven foot sword is like that's a i mean that that's a that's an image <laughs> like, like, <laughs> that's a that's a lot of he swords is, <laughs> he's an awesome awesome person so yeah, I'm, I'm lucky to know him. how he turned the tables on Graham was he then decided to come out to Florida. I, I, I don't think it was immediately. I think it was one of his visits out and, but we were, he was not yet working with us directly and Graham was mostly um, hosting Neil's visit and I was a part of it and we wound up taking him back to his hotel and it was kind of the last day of his trip where <laughs> do you remember? Oh so, so, so it was the last day of his trip. We'd not quite yet figured out if he wanted to work with us or how we could work. We were still kind of leaving it all open, how we could all work together. We, you know, obviously snow crash and, and his, his stories have been hugely inspirational, but like we were getting to know him, he was getting to know us, but we'd not yet really figured out how. So Graham and I went to go visit him in his hotel on his last day to just kind of wrap up the visit and, and just, you know, send him off and, and maybe talk a little bit about next steps. And when we get there, um, two things that really stood out to me in that moment, 
Well, I mean, bes- besides you get over the fact that like, oh, we're going into Neil Stevenson's room to talk to him about working with him. Um, first of all, he worked, I think this is still true, worked exclusively off of an iPad with a keyboard. And this was way back in the day. Um, MacBook uh, Pro now. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and then he had a... He had, he had the keyboards again. He had the good keyboards again. Oh, uh, yeah. No, oh, so he switched back. <laughs> they, uh, and then a, like a legal pad that basically he had written at the top of the menu and he had... He had listed, he had already been thinking about, he knew that was the point of the trip. He had already been thinking about, here's all the ways that we could, I could see working with this company and what you're, what you're trying to do. And, you know, it was kind of like some low hanging fruit stuff. Like obviously there's something in the snow crash universe or whatever. And then, and then, so we're sitting on this couch and we're listening and we're going, "Hmm, yeah, that's obviously that would be cool. And, and then he goes, so I've been working on another book that isn't out yet. um, But I think it might be interesting and then he goes on to Graham and I are sitting in this hotel room on this couch and he goes on to fully narrate the entire plot line of seven eves m- months before it was released. Well, before it was released, like, n- and like, I just can't express to you like what it's like to have someone tell that story. Who's thought through it so thoroughly. Like, it's like what Graham does with his, you know, his, te- his story test. And, yeah. Graham and I were just like listening and we're like, and it's a good story. So we're like, yeah, totally engrossed by it. And then we, we kind of leave, I think a little shell shocked. Like I remember Graham and I are in the car back to the office or going or leaving. And he, and we were just like, did we just get the full like personal reading of his unreleased book? <laughs> like it was like so bizarre. And like, even it was one of, it was I remember one of the best got... days, it was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> yeah, that was it, so what was fun for me, like not only being a part of that, but like watching Graham who does that to us, like you know, he like he he turns that the those experience, you know, he tells us stories all the time and and like to see him be like tested against a story was great and he yeah, you were giddy. <laughs> oh, he was done that to me again. He came in, he, he he came into me in Florida and he, he's like you know, like a year later, and he comes into my office. And you remember my office had a huge whiteboard on the wall. It was just all whiteboard. Um, yeah. Just you draw it. And he draws the numbers like 1806. Uh, like what the what the heck? And so he's like, imagine a there's a, a there's a pub in 1806, and there's a glass of beer sitting on a table, and you have to go back in time and alter the fate of that glass of beer. And by the end of the next 120 minutes, the whole <laughs> take thing is full of like you know st- stuff relating to this one glass. And I'm like, 120 minutes later, it's passed in like two seconds for me. I'm like, it's all started with the words 1806, <laughs> you know, a glass of beer. Now, it, 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 and then Neil's like, so can we go to the pub? I'm like, can, can I just take a picture of this wall? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's okay. So, 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 the, so the, what's the what's the difference between because, yes, both of you, both of you have this ability to spin. I, I, I'm bringing this back to the people who want to do this for a living. Both of you guys have the ability to spin tales and, uh, um, and, and 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 imagine universes and imagine outcomes. Um, what is the difference between how you guys accomplish that, how you and Neil accomplish that, and how uh, just somebody who's got a great idea and, and doesn't actually like like what what's where where do you go from all of these crazy thoughts in your head about the train and about Seven Eves and about the glass of beer? Like how do you take that to the next level? What is the, oh. what is the what what's the thing? that allows you as Graham or as Neil or as Paul or as Spencer to, 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 to make that into something that actually happens instead of I, just like, a, Hey, I got this idea, you know, I think a lot about, um, well, when I write, you know, I'm, I'm currently writing, you know, the, 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 the remake of the Metropolis game thing I'm doing in unreal, which is, you know, basically, uh, the daughter of the original hero and the talking dog, because um, I've given her a talking dog, because that's, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, I think a lot about sitting in a Starbucks or a coffee shop 
um, and just watching that world uh, and you know, reading the newspaper that will, and watching the people in that world and thinking about the people that walking by in that world. And that's kind of how I think about writing for that world. And I'll sit and I'll often actually go to, well, I can't now. <laughs> so, so, to, so I guess I'll just play a YouTube of sitting in Starbucks. <laughs> um, but um, I think about sitting there watching people go by and what their stories are and how the stories relate to how I want to tell an ordinary story in a day. I think it's very important to lay down the ordinary framework of your world before you lay down the, the you know anything supernatural, anything dramatic in your world before you do any other drama. Um, your world has to work. And so that, that's exactly the, the work I was doing with the Royal Shakespeare Company was exactly the same way. We, we created an alternative earth for that, that project. That's, uh, and so we worked so hard on that alternative earth version for weeks, weeks, weeks. And the Royal Shakespeare Company was like, what? You, you've gone back to, you know, to the, uh, all these years to create this alternative timeline. It goes back to, you know, done all these crazy things. And why to do that? It's like, well, now you believe even more in this world, right? You can tell stories in it. You can tell any story you want to. You can tell, you know, any story that happens in this world can be real. And then, like, so you set up the bones first. Oh yeah. You set up you set up the bones of the of of of, of the reality, and then you build on those bones. But the bones become kind of like like what you bounce off of in your story. Yeah, and that's right. In, in, I can tell immediately what, when I watch any sci-fi movie or any, because I watch a lot of them. <laughs> I watch yes. them you watch them all, and I love them all. Spencer and Paul will tell you that I love every movie. <laughs> but I, as, as soon as I watch a movie 10 minutes in, I'm like, this world is totally bogus. It, it, it just exists to serve the narrative of the story. Mm, it, it doesn't it, have that depth. Yeah, it's, and it should always be the other way around. The story should exist in the world. And that just know, so the world needs to be believable. Yeah, in, in, in Tolkien was the person who, who did that. I mean, he, he sat and you know wrote stories and stories and stories that you know in the in the world of Middle Earth before he actually wrote you know the Hobbit or you know or the, or the Fellowship of the Ring. He could write stories to his daughters, and that's actually the more magical thing. It just inspired a thing I'm going to try, which is. Um... Because I, I find myself more over the past couple of years, and I think it's my career path going forward, is 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 being more product-oriented, right, and designing product experiences. And I think one of the skill sets I have that allows me to do that is I think about in terms of um, – how, how it's meaningful to the target user. Like, and so like, it's not necessarily a story. It's not necessarily a, uh, an entertainment experience, but like even in a tool, I tend to, I tend to work from what does this mean to the end user? What are they trying to accomplish? How are we enabling yeah. that? But you've actually inspired me to also think about another layer of that, which is how does that user tell their friends, family, or coworkers what this, product does for them like what what does it mean in the in the context of their their world their life you know i i've i've always been really focused on like well they're the you know the if they're launching my product they're engaged in trying to accomplish some sort of goal and i want to and so i i do think that like thinking about how do you enable that is is important but i think another layer of that is like how they share their experience of using your product. And I've never really thought about, uh, you know, like if I build a new tool, um, how does like a, a you know, a, a technical artist tell their other friends about it? Like, how did it help their day? How did it help them? Like, you know, like, I think that's a really interesting approach to think about like, yeah, the, of course they're trying to achieve a task, but that's just like, that's kind of like your point of that's just the narrative. But like, what's the what, what's all the other things they're having to deal with? Like, you know, are they're they're thinking, are, am I using the right tool? Am I do I even want this job anymore? <laughs> like, you, <laughs> you 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 go crazy with thinking about. But but I think that's really a really interesting approach to think about the the fabric that the like uh, that that surrounds what you're what you're really trying to navigate. That's really interesting. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm gonna try it. 
I think we saw that with things like um, the Nintendo Switch with the with, with the Wii with uh, the Nintendo Wii, the Nintendo Wii with the with the bowling mm-hmm. game. Yeah. It was so visible. So your grandma would sit and watch you you know, do the bowling game. And after about 10 goes, she would go, okay, I've seen enough to understand and grok the concept. I'm willing to, I'm willing to right. let me have a go. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, you know, now I'm willing to make a, you know, to, 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 you to go up and have, it, it became a hit because of the visible construct that someone else showed you. And it was very easy to say, I know how to do this. There was no embarrassment to using it. Okay, so I, I think that we can uh, increase uh, um, uh, adoption of VR in that same way. And, uh, and right now, in the Quest, uh, and, and basically in any other uh, VR experience that you have, uh, um, you, are, uh, uh, you need to cast to uh, your Chromecast or to whatever other... Uh, device okay. is going to then display your experience into the world. You have to do that auto. You, you can't do it automatically. You have to actually like do the thing. Um, and I think that 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 um, having the ability. And I know this is like just a, can flipping a bit. I think uh, um, uh, is is that like when you put on a quest, you should have the ability to automatically start. Uh, casting to whatever device you want to, so oh, that yeah. when someone is in the room, because I, I noticed this with 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 uh, with my girlfriend Shaneen, is that she gets up every morning and she does some stretches, and then she gets onto uh, um, uh, she gets onto uh, Beat Saber, and she kicks ass on Beat Saber for like an, an hour, and she comes out all sweaty, and she's like totally worked out. And I don't see what she's doing. I don't see her experience because it doesn't automatically cast the TV. I want it to. I want to be able to see what she's doing because, you know, she's she's out there doing her thing. I just downloaded Shanna's uh, um, thing. The, uh, Supernatural. The uh, Supernatural. Right. And I would like to be able to, when I put something on my head, I, I, I know this is a little bit of a tangent from what you're talking about, but but... Like I want to be able to uh, um, display that to the world automatically or turn it off. Yeah. Like, of course, I don't want to have everyone always experiencing everything I'm doing in VR, but I would like to have some kind of, you know, uh, ability Participation. to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that other people can like really kind of get into what because I love like like I, I get up in the morning, I'm making my coffee, and she's out there like doing this in front of nothing and, you know well i mean and, 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 so so using this she, principle i'd actually like this idea of like okay yeah i'm building an ex- i'm building a vr experience for someone to have fun and get exercise but if you if you if you expanded the 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 universe of that story a little bit more you're like well somebody's probably playing this in their living room they probably have a roommate or a partner or someone else in the house. How does that person feel about what's going on? <laughs> you know, it's like, well, if right. actually they probably think that's a crazy person waving their hands around and I have no idea what they're doing. I hope it's fun. It looks like it's fun. No, but, <laughs> but I feel, I, I feel like, like I, I want to support her. Yeah. You want to be a part of it her, yep. in, in her workout and be like, Oh my God, I saw that thing you did. It was so cool. You know? And, 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 uh, um, so anyway, yeah, I, I think well, we, that the way that we think about uh, um, virtual reality uh, right now is very like like kind of uh, uh, kind of old school, straight up. You are putting VR on your headset, and you have that experience. Uh, um, the, the 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 concept of you having that experience and other people being able to opt into your experience if you allow them. I think it's it's it's, it's, a, it's it's good. I think I think that, I think that will it, it'll help increase the amount of people who are like, oh my god, you know, like when uh, um uh, when VR first came out, people were like, oh look, there's a guy with a brick on his face and he looks like an idiot. And there's like a ton of memes all over the place of like a dude with a brick on his face, Palmer Lucky on the beach, you know, and 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 that there's all this you know, kind of like ridicule of someone with a brick on their face. Uh, but that's, and they don't... Go ahead. In, in, in the promise of a true spatial operating system is that um, 
if we all have affordable, you know, affordable headsets that go from, you know, mixed reality to VR, that's, you know, that's, that cost not a lot of money that you can just put on your headset and see what your partner's doing in their environment automatically, because they're also, you're inside a shared space that you share automatically. And so two, I, two headsets. Um, and, but I agree absolutely that you should go to a phone or to a TV set or to what, whatever media as well. But the, the true experience is actually, you know, just, it, just, it, it should go to multiple headsets easily. Um, so yeah. I get, so I can, I can, I, I can see her, uh, um, uh, ghost sorting in the front room in the morning and, and be like, Oh, I want to see what she's doing. And so I put on my headset and I join her in that experience. And I sit we on all, the couch. We all still want the Star Trek holodeck. <laughs> that is all we want. Yeah. I want to be able to see who I want to see, you know, yep. Laurie. You know, you know, yeah, you, you, your girlfriend. You know, you know. I want to. I don't want, I don't want to see some avatar representation of them. I want to actually see them, and I want to see the virtual environment that we're both in together. And I want to. So I want to see you know, Beat Saber, and I want to see the, you know that virtual environment and see there, and and for her to see me, and for us to go on kind of you know that kind of adventure together. That's all I want. That's easy. Yeah, that's, I, uh, that's why I like the like we 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 talk we have talked about a few versions of this in past shows. Like first of all, it's it's really hard to communicate what you see and feel in these new HMD type things, and um, you know it, it you know video is a poor substitute, but it's the most efficient way for now. But like I like yeah. I, I love Graham. Like and then the other part is that I talk about it frequently. Is like I'm a I'm a big proponent of the web-based distribution of this stuff. Um, and not, yep. I mean, because like, like you think about the ready player one model where you, you can have whatever headset you want. It can be upgraded. It can have all the bells and whistles, but we're all ultimately participating in this. The, the, the person that the, the company that produces the device doesn't necessarily fully own the world that we're participating in. I mean, and the web is the only, model that I know of that actually represents that. I mean, we could all be, Spencer could be on his iPhone right now. I could be on a Mac. You could be on a PC, but we're using these, this, this higher level of technology that isn't owned by the hardware people. And so interoperability and then it, you know, like, like to me, I, I, unfortunately we've gotten in this pattern where the, the hardware company owns the software part of it because that's how they make, that's where the money is, right? The money's not really in the hardware for a lot of people. And I, I wonder if that's ever going to be possible. I hope so. I think, I think like, um, there are enough companies participating in the web XR and the web 3d type of effort to make it possible. And it may not be the most polished, best user experience care compared to something written directly for, a specific device, but I just have a tough time ever seeing us cross these interoperability boundaries. Like I, I want to look at it on my phone. I want to look at it on without some independent, that was one of the things like, you know, back to the magic leap thing. Like I, we had always internally, we talked about quote unquote shared world, but you know, I was, I, the, the concept, the, the more fully gestated concept of magic verse happened after I left. But one thing I was really bullish on was an independent company that, you know, they Magic Leap didn't have to support iOS and Android. They didn't have to put out Magic Script. And I thought that, like, even if even if those wouldn't be the technologies that unlock all this, like, people have to still make those efforts. And so that that's immediately where my mind goes to when we talk about this, like, the like how do we get get back to that? Like, I guess phones work that way too. Like. It, I can call you. I don't care if you have an Android phone <laughs> and we can talk to each other. Right. Um, but we can't have a video right. call very easily. Well, I think, well, a, it would be great if WebXR was actually ratified and put on to, well, not ratified. It has been ratified. It'd be great if WebXR was actually implemented and out of alpha and beta and yeah. put into Chrome and Safari on all devices and mobile devices, because it is actually great. Um, I think there's a, more politics in the way of it's being there right now than anything else. And I think a frictionless environment like, like WebXR would be fabulous. 
and I'd love to see that there. Um, and that would that is actually the most frictionless uh, mixed reality environment that we could possibly create for the world right now, and it would actually be pretty incredible because it allows for us to start to move to a world without apps in it, because it's the you only know, and allows us to move a world where we can switch context without having to switch apps. Yep. And so, so I think I, I have. I have a question for you, Graham, and I, I know that I'm not, I'm invisible right now <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I, I'm actually, if you I'm, make I'm a actually... flushing, if you make a flushing sound, I'm going to be very embarrassed. <laughs> so it's, it's fine. Graham, Graham, hold on one second. Oh, there we go. We've reached a, um, a new low. <laughs> no, but my question, uh, um, did you wash your hands? <laughs> 20 seconds. Of course I did. Of course I did. God. Uh, no, the, 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 okay. So we have, uh, um, okay. Oh, he's back. Sorry. I, I, no, I, 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 I had, I had a really, really important question for you and I forgot because I was making a joke about me going pee. So, well, I, I was going to throw up, uh, our, our former coworker, uh, had a comment, you know, we, we have talked to uh, Jörg, uh, we, we have talked about spatial before, um, when the, actually when magically we've announced support for it and, um, I did a little test of it and I will say that that's like kind of headed in that direction, right? Spatial's an independent company. They're agnostic to, um, headsets. They don't support every possible thing, but they're pretty close. Like they've got a desktop computer workflow, and I do, yeah. I do think something, but the, but then the trick becomes like in the case of spatial, they've kind of, they've put some good thought into like uh, realistic representation of avatars, which is something Graham said, you know, he thinks really important um, cross platform, cross device, which I think is really important. The part that they have not demonstrated yet. And this is just cause like, I'm a total nerd about this stuff, but like, um, and I think this, and I think this is what's going to dovetail into Graham's thoughts. Like, how can I, how can I contribute to the spatial? Like if spatial is creating a layer in which we can socialize virtually, there are some built in things we can do. We can load up pictures and 3d models and look at them. But what if we want to play a game together in that, that world? Um, it like who builds that? How can they build, how can, how, how could I build a, a fun digital game that, the three of us could play in a, in an environment like spatial. And, and to me, that's like, again, like the web has, is one of the few places I've seen really strong ability to p pull in other people's code. And I'll just say applications, but, and combine them into one context. And so like that, like, cause Graham, you have thoughts around like what you were saying, like we, we've been conditioned to think in terms of apps when it comes to our devices. We don't actually live our real world life that way. When is, when is the virtual part of our interaction not going to not have to involve, do you have this thing installed? Can you launch it? Like yeah. that breaks, that breaks the, that, that increases friction and it breaks the, the dynamic in a, in a lot of ways. No, we've been trained like dogs over the last, you know, 13 years to use our phones. So in all the icons on our phones, and now I have Google photos, Amazon photos, photos, <laughs> photos, photos, and all these photos apps. And photos stuff. of your photos. <laughs> photos of my photos going everywhere. Cause I have like 15 cloud backups and I'm sure I'm on every FBI database, but it's, um, uh, you know, Google maps, Apple maps, Bing maps. So I have, and it's, there's, so what's, what's the answer to that? The answer to that is to, is to provide an operating system that allows context for applications to exist in the world and the environment that you're that you actually are in, so you can switch context easily and for the for the applications to say what they actually are to the world. Um, like the the Unity Morphs project actually goes quite a long way towards this, um, and you know, you know Timothy does a great job of providing context to the environment that you're actually in, and you know it's it's actually you know. A, a great start to uh, providing context to the world that we're, you know, we're actually it says here's where you're at here, here's what's all around you here's what's what's available the, the thing that's you've got to add to that is easy context switching you know, which is what your eyeballs do when you look around 
of what's around. So here is where I have my, you know, this game I bought in, this game object I bought in, this this map object I bought in, this, you know, this, this CNN object I bought in, that I just want to re represent my news. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know, it can be Fox News, it can be CNN News, it can be whatever news, but it's, I, I, I look at that for my news. I don't go and search, you know, for <laughs> CNN.com or don't go and search for FoxNews.com, but then, um, these are the things that I bring in for so I context switch with my eyeballs instead of with my fingers. The scrolling so then, with fingers. So, so then you are, you have a news application, and that news application is fed by Fox News, CNN, BBC, uh, CNN, you know, uh, every, everyone who provides news. You can uh, already see Apple. Uh, begin, Apple's already beginning to try to do this with their news application. They're already beginning okay. to try to aggregate news, um, and they're okay. already beginning to try to aggregate these things. But they're doing a terrible job. To yes, it was, <laughs> right. It was blowing into my ear. It's like that was the ear that had an ear infection too. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but um, it's there. Are, yeah, that, that news aggregator sitting on top of an operating system that's creaky and old and built around all these apps that, right. that's, that yeah, that's yeah, yeah. things. It's it's almost correct, but it's not quite right. But it's still, so something, it, it's become your go-to because it's much easier to use than the others now. Right. So something something that you that, that you said recently on, I think, Facebook and uh, a couple other places was your uh, um, your your frustration with uh, multiple applications for the same thing. Uh, so I have a photo app and I have a Google photo app and I have a Bing photo app and I have a this photo app and there's all these different types of apps that all just give me my photos that I want. And so I think that what I'm hearing you say is that is, is that the, the, um, the, the smart direction is to have a photo app that you then feed with all of the different uh, applications or the, all the different SDKs or services or whatever. Uh, and so when you go to photos, you get a, you, you basically kind of like disambiguate all of that stuff into one photo app. And so now you have a photo app, a news app, a writing app, a, you know, a social media app or whatever. Effective. Kind of, yes. A, you, you can't put a name to a photo. A, yes, yes, yes. That is actually what it will end up looking like. But um, right. you know, from the operating systems level, it is just aggregating to an object type that will become a photo. Aggregating to an object type that will become a. a he, Paul probably went to go to the bathroom, but he's, 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 he's did. He went to go pee. Um, Let's talk about Paul um, and his pee. But yeah. um, <laughs> an object type that will, sorry, we're going to answer questions now like crazy as they go by. That's right. The, Anyone have any questions switch. about Paul? Do them right now. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, I'm back. Here. I'm back. He's back. Um, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> that's just one part of an operating system change that needs to happen from the bottom on up because the tools are all, a lot of the tools are already there. All the tools I think exist to go make the world changes that we require. Unity Mars is already there. AWS is already there. Storymaker is already there. All, all these things actually exist. It's kind of like in the 1920s when we had, you know, we had actors, we had scripts, we had cameras, we had the ability to go right. make films, but no one had made a movie theater yet. Um, right. Someone needs to go make a movie theater for this new stuff. Um, and right. so I'm like, okay, maybe post Magic Leap, I should go make movie theaters. <laughs> yes. 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 And, and, and the train game. <laughs> and the train game. <laughs> and all the other games. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I think we should maybe consider making this a whole show into uh, like a series. I think Graham should just come, just come on every time. <laughs> we've, we've basically talked a full length feature films worth of conversation and we could probably keep going oh, for several other, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Graham, you I'm might be our sure. first repeat guest. <laughs> I'm not sure that anyone actually learned anything. I, we don't I, care. I, I, I really worry that we don't worry about it. XR talk. Don't worry talk. about it. We don't care. This is this is for us. If somebody gets something out of it, good for them. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I mean, no, I think like, no, don't worry about it. The, the, the point, like we, the, the point of XR talk is to have people that really have been hands on in this world, um, to help people see, um, how we're working with this stuff and to help them get involved, like help them get into the movie theater basically. And, um, I knew that you like one thing we always enjoyed working together is having these deep conversations and, um, and it's been a while since we've talked to you and, uh, and, and, you know, just wanted to kind of get caught back up, but there's certainly, we only even scratch, we, we only even talked about our working, uh, relationship at Magic Leap in, in that you recruited us in and we got a demo there and we talked to Neil Stevenson. So there's so many other stories and things we could talk about. Um, so I think we probably should have you back if you're not busy, if you got something like <laughs> yeah, that. I, I, I'm, I'm not as busy as I actually, I'm way busier than this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're like, oh, I've got a backlog. <laughs> it's actually been, I've got to tell you that this last, for the first week after, after Magic Leap, um, I spent that kind of connecting people and uh, kind of trying to find lifeboats for people. And that was, you know, that connecting recruiters to people and doing all the thing. And that was, I didn't even think about much else. That was, um, then I took the weekend off and this last week I've actually thought about the post Magic Leap world for, for, for me. That's kind of been the, the world that I started to think about. Um, and that's kind of um, been kind of where I've been with that. It's only been really a week. Yeah. Well, I guess it's been. <laughs> well, I guess it's been three weeks today, but it's been a week. It seems like it's just been two weeks. Yeah. But it's um. Yeah. N none of us really have any kind of track on days at this point. <laughs> well, I was gonna say it's something that's really common. I I was telling someone else that recently left, and um, you know, we've been gone since twenty. I've been gone since twenty sixteen, and. Um, there was a few people that left the same time I did. And, um, I mean, I don't think this is anything specific to do with magic leap. I, I think it's by virtue of the fact that we did live in a, in a, in a future world. Like I've talked about this before where we, got, we got beyond understanding how is this tech ever going to be possible? And we got down to the business of talking about how is this tech going to be useful and how is it going to be used? And, what you learn when you get out <laughs> of that world is that the rest of the world is, is so not ready for like a lot of those conversations or like that are really not aware of the implications or what's even possible. And we have talked about that on this show before that my biggest concern is that we've now seen over the past 13 years when companies control the, the business model and, and, and how you consume, it can be dangerous. And so like, that's another part of this, what we talk, the reason why we have XR talk is to give people a little glimpse into the types of capabilities that are very soon possible. Some of them are already here and like the types of things we're thinking about. So it's a real, I mean, like, so I, all that is to say, you know, I, I think a lot of people when they, when they, come back into general population after, after having served, um, you, you realize like people aren't on the same wavelength. You like, you, like when you talk about, Oh, I, I looked over my shoulder and there was a monster over my shoulder and I just knew it to be there. People don't really understand what that means, you know, and what, and the implications of that. <clears throat> I tell or even it. how, or even how to scan, for a surface with an iPad, <laughs> right? Well, like, 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 like <laughs> I mean, well, there, 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 there's these things that we all take for granted that, that that we just, you know, yeah. Go ahead, Graham. Yeah, I tell the thousand souls, and if any of them are listening, this is for them. Um, that uh, we're on Mars, and we're wearing spacesuits because um, we just got laid off, and uh, we've already got so much air, and you know, everyone else is on Earth. <laughs> um, but we're on Mars, um, and we've got an advantage because everyone wants to go to Mars. Um, Mars is cool, but uh, we've got two choices. 
um, we just got dropped off by this huge spaceship and we can attempt to build a habitat, go find that cave that's not going to get the UV lights, go build this habitat. You know, um, we'll, we'll go back to Earth. <laughs> yeah. And tell them what we saw. <laughs> yeah. Say, so don't, you better be wearing a suit if you go that way. <laughs> but, uh, I choose to try and build a habitat, so <laughs> I, I'm staying out here. Yeah. I, I'm staying out here. I, well, I mean, you know, like I think that's kind of our thing too, right? Like I, we we what instead? Well, I think the approach. I mean, this show is like a a a a perfect reason for. We're basically saying, hey, there's a habitat being built. We're gonna help you. Like we're gonna help the people on Earth. Like get there, and we've already been there. And we're gonna make sure you're wearing a suit because you need one. And you know, uh, you oh, know, do you need a suit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've already had that conversation with Spencer when he went to the White House. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Graham wore a suit. Yeah, um, yeah Graham we... wore a suit to the White House. It was amazing. I have, I have a photo. I can find it. Yeah. <laughs> See, we could tell yeah, stories for suit. hours. We should probably, we should probably, Graham, if you're up for it, I'm just going to go and throw it out there. You can think about it. You don't have to answer, but we should probably do at least a once a month Graham episode where we just have a, a happy, a happy oh, I hour. I love that. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. throw it out there. Not every week, just once a month. We can talk about it. Think about it. Don't answer now. It's fine. Uh, but if you would like to watch the Graham episodes, plural, um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel like and, and subscribe and it's probably down here somewhere um yeah so this was awesome i knew we would run long i didn't care um i knew we would talk about all kinds of crazy stuff and um it uh, you never disappoint um i'm re i'm really happy so good to see you dude yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. good to see the two of you really good to see the two of you yeah <laughs> so um and graham's on our discord by the way i don't know who's not on our discord but if you want to get on it's chat.xrtalk.net um and we will have another episode probably next week i'm lining up some really fun guests some of which are personal friends of graham's i'll just drop that as a hint <laughs> so thanks everyone for sticking it out or if you've watched this entire episode that's a heroic effort because we did an hour and a half exactly and uh we'll yeah. see everyone next time thanks so much to the peanut okay. gallery we didn't talk to you guys a ton but i saw some good stuff i want to go read later in there bye thanks, everyone guys,